Hi, and welcome to the Latvian Football Podcast, where today I continue speaking to the fascinating and wonderful people who look at Virsliga from the outside, the, the people who follow and enjoy the games, so despite not being uh, from Latvia or Latvian. With me today is Frank Mar, who is a mostly Riga-based uh, marketing and festival not an entrepreneur, but sort of an entrepreneur. Is that fair, Frank? I'm involved in a range of marketing businesses um, and currently trying to set up, or we, we've set up a couple of festivals um, in the UK and currently doing one in France uh, for 2024. So an element of an entrepreneur, yeah. Is it music festivals? No, it's a it's a wine festival. It's uh, attempting to do what's happened in the craft beer and the uh, coffee sector to try and uh, open up the wine industry a little bit more to newer, younger uh, demographics uh, and to create a bit more of an experience behind everything. But yeah, I've, I'm also I've also got a couple of agency marketing agencies that I'm involved with, and I'm currently establishing an office in Riga. So that's. Uh, one of the big reasons why I'm based in Riga, um, along with having a Latvian wife as well. Ah, so that 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 little tidbit there is probably quite important, right? Yeah, but I mean, so it's a cho- I had a cho- we had a choice between staying in London and chilling out a bit more in in Riga, and you know I'm, I'm I go to London quite frequently, and I think the quality of life in Riga is a lot better particularly when you go and watch a football football quite easily and it's so accessible. Right. So let's then get uh, straight to football. You told me privately that you follow Virsliga for um, a surprising amount of time. How did that happen? So I ended up in in Latvia uh, when COVID hit and we kind of went decided to go into lockdown at my wife's home city of Valmira. And Valmir in the summer is, it's a beautiful place. And uh, one evening I saw a football match taking place and I hadn't, hadn't really looked too much into the Latvian league. I was aware of um, the mighty Skontor Riga from many years ago. Uh, so I went to watch a football game and um, I found it, I found it really interesting. The, the, the quality of football was, was, uh, Considering the size of the stadium and so on, it, the the quality was to a good standard, and there were some really interesting players. And I saw the the mighty Tolu, the the big Nigerian striker, absolutely dominate the game. And I thought, wow, this this player is one for the future. And then I just started going to watch Valmir FC um, during lockdown, and I just sort of. Uh, had a very positive vibe towards the the Valmira football team, and I thought that they 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 were they were an impressive setup. That so COVID times you then witnessed the kind of the beginning of the peak of Valmira, just as this uh, golden squad that would go on a couple of years later to win the championship for the first time was beginning to form and co- coagulate. Yeah, with with um the the manager the Tomash the the manager they they were starting to formulate. Um, I recall hearing him often encouraging them to press, press, press. Very young team. Um, and yeah, they 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 were slowly starting to formulate into a quite a strong um competitive unit. So they were they were, they were an exciting group to watch uh, in that moment. And then I think the following season they started to get some. Uh, addition, uh, new additions that really, really took them to the next um, level. So, so was it just the the circumstances of COVID that um, you know made the Valmiera games and, and Latvian football attractive for you because you were there and uh, they were there also, or is there something maybe else that uh, kept you with it? Well, I, I I've always loved football. My first job. Well, one of my first jobs in university in Cardiff was 
um, working at Ninian Park, Cardiff City's old stadium, um, in as a barman. Uh, you could serve all the football fans before the game. Then at half time, they'd get served. Then the bar would close, and you'd go and watch the second half. So, so that so I used to go and watch Cardiff City quite a lot, and also the Welsh national team. The League of Wales was never that interesting. Uh, it was it wasn't to a good enough standard. And then I used to live next to um, Arsenal Football Club, uh, so I got to occasionally see them. But tickets were a lot more hard to come by. I've lived in South Korea, and I used to watch um, FC Seoul quite a lot as well. Before kind of settling a little bit more in um, next to Charlton Athletic, um, and I used to live next to the Valley and, and go and watch them. So I've always had an absolute love for football, um, probably since the nineteen ninety eight World Cup, with, with the great teams there, Burkamp and the, the Dutch team were were on fire. England just lost, although I'm not an English fan at all as a Welshman, but England had quite an interesting tournament um, with some fascinating players coming in, but. I just love football. I think it's um, it's a great sport to play, and it's there's endless entertainments. There's there's week in week out drama. Uh, there's there's always something new. Um, yeah, there's there's always something to keep you entertained in football. Right. Well, with a football resume such as yours, uh, I mean, uh, it it must be something there. At least it's better than the Welsh league, which is fantastic. I'll take that any day. Did you did you go then to um, when Wales were visiting um, last year? Yeah, yeah, I certainly went down to you feel uh, like home with, all of a with sudden. My fellow Welshman and uh, yeah, didn't quite paint the town too red, but yeah, it was um, it was a special atmosphere. Um, there were aspects of the supporters which were just on a bit too much of a, a jolly and uh, with, with you know drinking too much and so on, but. I mean, seeing Wales play is always a special moment. Um, we, I've, I've, I watched Wales when they almost qualified for the Euros, lost to Russia in the playoff. Um, they, yeah, they, they were always just about getting getting into tournaments, but always just missed out. And I watched Gareth Bale make his debut, Aaron Ramsey, and so on. So yeah, it was it's, it was really special seeing um, uh, Wales in in Latvia. But I've been following the Latvia national team quite often as well in in the Skontor. Right. Well, uh, we're we're about to get a new coach, so hopefully things will get um, a little bit more exciting in that respect. But uh, you know, fingers crossed. Yeah, I think I think the national team has been quite disappointing. I think they they've really lacked a, a motivation. I think there's there's they're certainly they've got quality in in the technique, but they really lack uh, yeah motivation and and the the physical aspects of the game at the moment. So hopefully that will change a little bit. Yeah, we hope slash know slash believe that we can do better and there is a historical record to prove. So just hopefully um, maybe repeat something to that extent and uh, uh, everything will be great again. <laughs> yeah, I think best, best team in the Baltics, best national team in the Baltics by far. Oh, obviously, team and league, uh, as the records of Livonian Winter League uh, at the moment are... Um, Proving. No offense to our northern and southern friends. It's just the way it is. I'm, I'm sorry. Although Leopard had a, a bad start, did they not? Did they lose? They did. But uh, as we record now, Estonian teams are minus 15 points on aggregate. Yeah. Th th this will be released uh, a little bit later. So we'll see how things are. But if the trajectory holds, uh, it's probably going to be very good for us. And not that uh, great friend. Did you did you manage to catch any of the Livonian um, league? I've, I've not had the chance. So, um, I, yeah, I've not had the chance. Summer is, I think, the friendly games, kind of indoor. I'm more about the the live experience as much as anything, I guess. But yeah, I mean, they won. Leopard won eight nil against um, the Lithuanian team. So something's starting to change, and yeah, we'll we'll see. They'll, they'll they're going to be an interesting team next year, I think. It's suspicious because there is no photographical or videographical records of that game. So they say they won 8-0. Uh, okay, okay. There's no witnesses, as it were. All right. Well, what what do you like about Virsliga? What do I like? So I think you... I mean, what, what, what leagues do you compare the league to? Me? Uh, I That's the only football I watch, so... Yeah. I used to I used to watch when I was younger. 
Um, I used to follow the, the Spanish league uh, intimately. I, I was familiar with the Premier League, given that I lived uh, there for, for quite a while. But then I had this gap where I sort of dropped football for a, almost a decade, and I've only come back to it when I returned to Latvia and, and started rediscovering all the wonderful things we have here. So I genuinely put all my football time that I have not and don't have, have in credit um, into the Virus Liga. So I don't follow anything else. Nice. Yeah, there's there's only there's only so much uh, there's only so many hours in a day that one can devote to football. As much as I love it, and um, I've, I've got the, the apps on my the Flash Score app and and so on. Yeah, there's there's only so much. But um, I think going back, I think talking about leagues to compare, which I kind of didn't quite answer before. If you compare the League of Wales, I think there aren't the the, the league can't attract the international players. That you can in Latvia, um, it's not as commercially as uh, it's not as commercially uh, as successful as as the biz, some of the business models that are emerging from the Visi Liga. Really, uh, and I think that's the same aspect of the Irish League as well. I think there's there's a really good opportunity for the Latvian um, League to to stand out uh, to stand alone in the aspect of attracting talent, nurturing talent, and and you know creating a quite an interesting business model um, from that side. Well, I don't know much about the Welsh League. Um, Irish League, I think, in rankings is slightly above us, but we do um, manage outgoing transfers that are significantly more valuable than the Irish League. So, I mean, that's uh, that's a plus. But in terms of business models of things like club ownership, um, I would... I don't know. Is isn't not the other way around? Don't you have um, actual fan owned clubs in Wales? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it depends what model you're looking for. I think um, it's. I think what what is just as important for for Latvian football is how it can grow and thrive ultimately. And the 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 main the main setback for for Latvian football is the the lack of. Um, commercial opportunities in terms of attracting fans, or or what the what the club and teams are doing to get more fans into the stadiums and so on. So, you know, if you look at, if you look at the different models that that can occur in the Latvian league, um, such as uh, multi owned uh, ownership, the multi ownership model, and so on, there's a there's better prospects of bringing in players, nurturing them, improving them, and and selling them on. Um, so the league acting as 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 an interesting feeder league, and you do get that aspect, I guess. And I don't know that much about the Irish league, or I know the Welsh league quite, the League of Wales quite well, and that's that's often a disappointment. Partly because you've got Swansea, Cardiff, Newport, Wrexham, which is Wrexham's an incredible football story, but you've got these teams in the English league, so you've got the big commercial teams that are not able to contribute to to the national league, so that's disappointing. Uh, whereas I think the the Latvian I listened to your last podcast and you mentioned the that it's a it's a it's privately owned the league it's not it's not owned by the association it's not run by the association it's not run uh, it's it's not owned either so that that was more of a metaphor but yeah it's um, it's run by the clubs by the association of clubs and uh, overlooked obviously by the football association. So it's it's not run by the Latvian FA. It's run by the Virsliga, which is uh, all ten clubs um, getting together in a, in something like a co-op slash. Uh, well, essentially, they they have their own representative organization that uh, runs the um, competition. Yeah, I think it, it's figuring out what's the best for for the club and 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 the league. And I support fan owned clubs. Um, but I also support um, commercially viable clubs that, that that can grow and prosper and help develop the league, and that includes investment in academies and so on. And I often see the commercial model as as the most important aspect, um, such as trading players, developing them, and, and selling them on, and so on. And I think that the Latvian league, the clubs particularly, uh, can be a bit of a Blank, uh, blank canvas for um, uh, growing a business, a football business organization. 
Um, so I, I think there's some big opportunities there, which is good and bad. It depends on what's best for the league, I guess. Um, and I think what's best for the league is what's best for the national team and how you can, you know, get more fan involvement, get more players through the academies and, and so on. And, and what, what does that model look like to do that? RFS is a, is a you know, a really impressive model and they're, they're about to get 30% fee, I believe, for Illich and, and so on. So they, they, they've got some interesting um, system going on there. Whereas you've got uh, Valmira. I don't believe they got, it took them a very long time to get their money in for their players last year and that affected um, how they progressed last season. They also had a lot of unfortunate injuries as well. But what I like about the the, the Latvian League is that um, there's things being tested and tried and there's a whole new evolving um, situation in football, whether you've got the Wrexham story or you've got the the Red Bull or the Man City stories of, of these these group ownerships and so on. And the whole football sector is 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 taking off in a different way. You know, there's there's lots of lucrative opportunities with with the Saudi League and America and, and and so on. And Latvia can really position itself to grow a bigger fan base and and grow grow a better model as a result of what's going on um, in the world. I believe. I'm not sure if that's a bit controversial to say that. Uh, so, you know, having watched Charlton athletic uh be flipped around from different owners it's also very disheartening when when it goes wrong it's your perspective so i mean there's nothing controversial about it but what would you say then is needed to grow this fan base and maybe grow international exposure so i guess like if you look at the there's the, the ukrainian basketball playing at the Riga arena at the moment prompty i think they're doing a really good they're, they're creating a very good um, game experience and really bringing in families a lot more. I think often there's a lack of community marketing for the clubs. Like Charlton Athletic would always do like um, family packages or uh, children go for three days. I, I believe they do that occasionally at FC Riga, but it doesn't feel like there's, there's not, there's sometimes a bit of a disconnection um, from what's around the stadiums and, and and the communities, I think RFS are a really good example again of trying to get more of the uh, local community involved. But I think the league needs to do more to attract more supporters and you know look at look at the different commercial asp uh, aspects there. All right, yeah, RFS they they do this bouncy castle thing for when weather permits to get yeah. uh, families in, which is. Uh... I guess it's a bit of a mixed success uh, in in so much as um, people choose to go to football over other activities on, on a sunny day. But uh, year on year, we do see a, at least a marginal increase in attendance. So that's uh, encouraging. And of course, the Riga derbies are always sold out. So that's great. Yeah, that, I mean, that was great last season. The Riga derby where, you know, that, that was sold out. And I think the the um, Euro Cup games, um, the Euro, Euro Conference Cup, they, they've been great match day experiences. And it's how you can bring that to the league a little bit. I mean, it's sad that the, you know, the cup final, that wasn't a sellout and things like that. So I think the league and, and the football clubs need to make a bit more effort from from the marketing side to get more of the general public involved and think about the storytelling aspects to the general public a bit more the cup final it was it was close to sold out it was over five thousand and I think, okay maybe it was a previous season but it was it was also like plus three i i was there and i froze everything off because it went into extra time and then it went into the penalty shootout yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. then I, I went i got ill for like a week after that so yeah I, just as the winter's creeping in yeah no the previous season i guess when Arda won it i think that was yeah, yeah. but then the football was just recovering again as a result of COVID. So i might be incorrect there and and now there was a new team it was their um, debut at least that that form of Arda in the beers league so what I'd like to do, and as, as you know, uh, at the end of this is a bit of a lightning round to get uh, yeah. some um, knee-jerk responses from, from you. Um, and as I uh, explained to uh, other guests before, of course, the world is not black or white. So whilst, uh, you know, these are a bit extreme and you can pick one or the other, if you feel the need to explain your choice, you can 
you know have a sentence but um, for all intents and purposes uh, these are a uh, one or the other kind of questions sounds good yeah I'm, yeah just being decisive on questions always nice let's let's start with the easy easy one um, tea or coffee uh, tea with milk black tea with milk zero surprises from our audience uh, from the British Isles but uh, all right uh, live games or broadcast live games especially in the summer there's a sun setting oh yeah and uh, blinding you right in the eyes which is not a not an infrequent occurrence in various league of matches uh, Champions League or European Super League oh Champions League yeah it's, there's amazing stories from the Champions League especially from my younger days I mean, I, I suppose in the future I can also reframe this as uh, relegation football or MLS open league, closed league. Um, fan owned clubs or sugar daddy owned clubs? I, I'm, I'll, I'll land in the middle there and say both. That's not the most decisive, but it depends on it depends on the the league. Um, you know, is is the German league the best league right now? Is it the most competitive or is it being dominated too much by one team? It's nice when there's a bit more competition. So probably leaning more tragically towards the, the commercial aspect to make it more exciting, but romantically fan owned. So so maybe more of a benevolent uh, a philosopher king owner. A, a suitable share ownership model. Right. Uh, real turf or artificial? Real turf every time. A good slide tackle, a good physical game. Yeah. Uh, Favourite Viersliga team? Valmir FC, similar to last week, I believe. Yeah. Nice. They'll be very keen. Although I'm trying to make myself like Riga FC, but they just need to be less individual sometimes and play more, be more of a team. Well, um, you might enjoy the coming season then because they're current friendly performance is uh, it's pretty much a a fusion of Finnish tiki taka insofar as i can discern it yeah yeah i think losing the um the, the guy who's gone to the spanish league that that was a good sale that was a sensible sale 600,000 yeah for aurelia to go to third yeah. division I really, yeah and i don't think i don't feel he was tracking back or or playing much with he was too much of an individual player so yeah that, that wasn't a bad bit of business that was the approach of the previous coach it was all about speed and individual dribbling so this is going to be basically a 180 turn yeah i really hope so i really hope so yeah. because yeah they they need to come together a little bit more and stop trying to show them showcase their, their individual uh, skills sometimes all right and finally um individual national leagues or a baltic league but, yeah i think a baltic league uh, league I, I support a baltic league i think you know uh, it, it could make the the league a lot more competitive and it could improve national football for all three countries so i think um make the baltic league a powerhouse you know yeah uh fantastic well, thank you so much, Frank. It was uh, genuinely interesting to speak to you, and we we delved into some uh, topics we haven't covered with the previous episodes, and I I love that. Thank you for joining me. No, let's just have a let's hope it's an absolutely awesome season and um, keep up the good work. And it's it's a beautiful league, and um, yeah, hopefully it can bring more people together and uh, develop some more world class players that that might go on to become superstars, but. Yeah, here's to football. <laughs>